So today we want to speak to you about a wonderful uh, subject that I believe the Lord has got an excellent plan with. And it's still we busy with God's benefits uh, this morning. And the benefits are available. And you know, it's up to us if we're going to unlock the benefits. Because God's got lots of benefits for us. But we have to want the benefit. And we need to access the benefit. And the topic we're going to look at today is healing. And basically it is healing again Satan's evil power. Because we need healing. But if we don't know who we're fighting and what we're fighting, we won't be able to identify what is needed. So identification is so important. That means we've got to be wisdom master builders. Because if we don't do the wisdom master builders, we're not going to benefit. So God wants us to, to do the wisdom master building on a daily basis. And so we're going to look at the word in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 29. And the Lord says, Then I say to you, do not be terrified. So the first thing to get your heart right, don't receive what Satan meant to harm you and act out of that by receiving that as the final order. He says, do not be terrified and do not be afraid of them. So you've got to settle that in your heart. If something is going to frighten you and you're going to feed that fear, you're going to land up on the other side of the line. You're going to land up in hopelessness. You're going to land up in discouragement. You're going to land up in losing the battle. You cannot afford that. So fight a good fight of faith. Faith is the requirement. Faith means believing what he says and responding what he says. If we don't respond or we believe, we're not going to have victory. The believing, he says, only believe then you shall receive. So believing is crucial in any battle that you face. But of course, you've got to settle your heart. You can't be afraid of the worst. Don't let the devil get hold of your mind to tell you how bad it's going to get. Because he doesn't know what the future holds for you. God knows the future. And God already said, I have given you life, life to the full and abundantly. So we've got to claim that full and abundant. If we don't, we're going to speak what the devil wants you to feel and respond to. And remember, God says, my thoughts and my plans are higher than anything else. But doesn't he also say that they are good for a great future and an excellent future? So the story, the news is out already. God's plans is a good future. And God's plans is for us to have hope and never to give up. So we've got to decide at the starting line, what kind of heartbeat are we going to run with? Are we going to run with defeat or are we running with victory that is on our mind? Every morning we wake up is a new race that we sign into. So we can sign into defeat today, hopelessness today, or we can sign into God's got a good plan. And you know, we've got to remind ourselves, God's got a good plan for me. God's got hope and he's got every good thing, every good thought he has got for me today. And so I access and choose that today. Remember, he says, choose this day what you will build on. Choose this day. Will you choose life, the blessing, or will you choose the curse and death? Choose this day. So every day tells me that it is a choice what you choose. But God's not going to bowl you over if you choose destruction, hopelessness, sadness, depression. If you choose that, God's not going to interrupt you. Because he's given us the right to choose today. And so I love the fact that he says, do not be terrified and do not be afraid of them. 
Because whatever the them is that wants to rise up against you, don't be afraid. Choose what God has got for you. And he says in verse 30 that the Lord your God who is going before you, do you realize every day God wants to walk ahead of us and prepare the journey for you? Because he is a God that serves his children well. So he goes, he says, the Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you. I love that. What a beautiful guarantee that God wants to fight for us. He wants to take the devil out and he wants to flatten him on the ground so that you can walk all over his scam. He says he will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt. Now, you know, when we were unsaved and still in that ugly state of self-reliance and whatever it might be, and we were really not born again, we were in Egypt, weren't we? We lived a life not in heavenly rounds, but in destruction and strongholds. But he says, as he did for you in Egypt. So from the moment you life was put in you, he was fighting and he's been fighting for you and me. And he's whispering, egging us on, choose life, choose the blessing, move forward. But we get so caught up with what we're going through that we're not listening to what he's saying to us. He says, he says, as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. And you know, there were moments when you were unsaved that you realized that God was doing things for you on behalf behind the scenes because blessings were coming your way. People showed you kindness. People were blessing you, and you didn't even realize it was God that was working behind the scenes, looking for a way that he can bless you. Suddenly, he brings you before the kings, and then they're mindful of you, and then they want to bless you or open up a door for you. That's God working behind the scenes because he wants to bless you. And verse 31 says, And even in the desert, even in the dry, even in the famine, he was in the desert with you. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you. Many of us have said the, uh, the following statement, God, I can't do this anymore. Anybody said that? God, I can't do this anymore. Anybody said that? Yes. And he says, there you saw how the Lord your God carried you. Because even if you feel you can't get it through the day, he still carries you through that day. He still works the time in favor be on behalf of you. As a father carries his son all the way, you went until you reached this place. Now think about it. What is this place? This place of reliance. This place where your faith is active. This place where you're tasting and you're seeing the goodness of God. We can see that the Lord is speaking to all of us today. Now, here's some good news and a good example. In the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38, he says, You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with a Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good, and listen what he did, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So you can see that God brings deliverance as well. And healing, we can be healed from any oppression, any sickness, any famine, any dry season. God wants to heal us. And Jesus went about doing good. So if you think about it, even he wants to do good in your life, healing all who are oppressed by the devil, who's got a spirit of depression on them, who's got a spirit of heaviness. Do you know that if you have the discernment of the Lord, you can, when you're talking to people, you can hear heaviness. You can discern oppression. You can discern no faith. No reliance. 
And basically, those are all spirits that move in because they're given place in our lives. And we've got to recognize those kind of spirits that are at work. And he says, what did God do for the man when he saw Satan oppressing him? He sent Jesus. Hallelujah. He brought a solution in our lives. We got to hear about the good news. And the good news sets us free. And so we can see that even with this, in 1 John 3 verse 8, he who does, and I love that, does what is sinful is of the devil. That means we follow the devil's instruction. So I don't want to be a follower of the devil's instructions. He says, because the devil has been sinning from the very beginning. And it's true. What is his greatest sin? Pride. Distraction. He lies to us. If you only just take that extra hundred rand, no one will see. What a lie that is. If you only just do this, no one will see. He's such a liar. But he says, the reason that the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. So every time we celebrate Jesus, we know we've got the yoke destroying God on our side. He destroys yokes. He uproots the devil's plans. He interrupts the destructive plan. So every time you say, Jesus, the plan of destruction has just been interrupted again. And so if we give glory to him, he interrupts the destructive plan. Because we connect with life and life to the full until it overflows. But it is our decision is to hold on and embrace the one that destroys yokes. If we hold on and we claim what he's got for us, the destroying of yokes will be our portion. But we've got to hold on and not give in to the emotions, to the thought patterns of limitation. Because every time we connect there, we connect to the devil's plan. And so God is saying discernment this morning. People were brought, many who were demon-possessed, when he preached the word of God, they were set free. And so in the Greek, we can see to loosen those bound by the works of the devil. So you can see he binds people up in a yoke. That's what Satan's biggest aim is. And when he binds us up in a yoke, he limits every opportunity in our lives. And if we serve the yoke binder and the, uh, the one that holds us in captivity, then our lives are going to be limited. But if we go to God, He is the yoke destroyer and He loosens whatever grip the enemy has. He loosens us from the effects of the devil's works. So Matthew 8 verse 16 is a good example how God would work on behalf of us. And he says in verse 16, And when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. Now isn't that beautiful? Taking the people that were demonized to the place to go and get their freedom. And he cast out the spirit with a word. Isn't that beautiful? So you and I were given the authority to cast out the devil's works or every evil spirit with one word. Because there it says, he cast it out with a word, the spirit. And he healed all who were ill. So we can come under a demonic force when we surrender to that kind of sickness. And that kind of sickness wants to steal your joy, wants to steal your strength, and wants to bring you under its lordship. And the minute we obey the demonic forces, we're on a destructive path. Isn't that true? And everyone that comes around us, we, we try and destroy their lives as well. So it is not an option to ever depart from the place of safety and go to the place of war. 
And this is exactly what happens when the mind is saturated with deception and lies. We act out of deception and act out of lies. They're not even true. They don't even line up with the Word of God. And the best way to interrupt someone who's in a destructive life span or a destructive way of living life is say, I reject that. It is not true. Don't try and convince them another way. Just speak direct words. I reject that. That is not true. And walk away. And pray for the lights to be switched on in their mind that is occupied by darkness. Because darkness wants to remove the joy, the life, the fullness God has got for them. And so let's have a look and see what does it say in verse 17. It says there, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the book of Isaiah, the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. So what does God want to do? He wants to take our infirmities away from us, and he wants to carry away our diseases. He doesn't want us to carry diseases. That's not his best plan. It doesn't mean that the devil is going to try, not try, and put it on you. But when he does, we've got to choose what does God say. God said him himself, took our infirmities, and he carried away our diseases. So the minute we allow the devil to have the platform to uh, move in our lives and to have access to our mind and to remove our joy, we know we've signed his contract, the devil's contract. And we're not willing to sign and, and, and live with the devil's plan, right? We've got to decide, God says, we will be healed, we will be whole. But it means you stand until it's fully manifested. That doesn't mean God's not doing it. It means he's at work in us. He's raising a new standard in us. And that new standard is going to rebuke the devil. So we rise up in the new standard and the standard of the truth of God will rebuke the devil. Amen to that? Isn't that beautiful? So that means he's consistently at work as we hold on to his promises. But don't let go. Don't let go from the truth. Hold on to the truth. When that pain is speaking to you, say, by the stripes of Jesus, I believe I'm healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I am made whole in Jesus' name. Devil, you have lost again. Jesus said with one word, he casted out that tormenting spirit. Now, pain, leave in Jesus' name. Discomfort, go in Jesus' name. Remember, if we don't address it, it's going to stay. It's going to move in. And if it moves into our life, it is to steal our dreams, it's to steal our joy, it's to steal our flexibility. Because you know when your back or your leg or your foot is sore, there is definitely an interruption with your flexibility. Is that not true? When your elbow is sore or your shoulder is sore, it's interrupting your flow, is it not? So we have to, every time it is speaking to us, or we are feeling it, we say, Satan, you have lost again. You are exposed. This is my arm, and I'm blessed by the Lord. Satan, you take your pain, and you move in Jesus' name. I am the healed. I am the whole. I am complete, lacking nothing. So the speaking part is our responsibility. Because if you say nothing, you stay with the pigs in the far parlor. You stay with a stinky problem. And the problem is not ours. Amen? Because we're living in a sanctified body, a body that's been made whole, complete, and has the goodness of God in. Well, the devil's evil plan can't stay with the goodness of God. Two different worlds can't stay together. Is that not true? So we take back our land. Amen to that? Tell your neighbor, my land is sanctified by God. I'm healed. I'm whole. And I'm complete. 
and I lack nothing. Flexibility, I'm whole, I'm complete, and Jesus already paid for it. So the bill's paid for in full. We don't have to pay for this. We are tested by it, but we're not paying for it because Jesus already paid for it on the cross. So we've got to get our thinking and our respond right. If we don't respond, we settle. So we can't settle for what is not of God. It's already paid for. So what did Jesus do on this? He himself took our infirmities. He didn't say he might have. He didn't say he could have. He says he took our infirmity and he carried away our diseases. So where's the disease being carried away? So what is the devil bringing? A seam like, a symptom. So if it's taken away and he carried it away, what is it showing up in our face for? It's, I need to test what will we believe. So you know what? When we recognize it as a test, we know we have to respond. Because if we don't respond, we're settling. And settling is not an option. So what does Jesus say about his word? Jesus, in his death, he took all, he didn't say some, he took all our infirmities and he took all our diseases so that we could go free. Pain is a form of infirmity. Pain is a form of a disease trying to attack and move into our body because it starts in a certain place and it moves into another place and it tries to get us under, under that result. But we've got to recognize that Jesus is our healer. He took all our diseases and he took all our infirmity and he carried it away. Amen to that? And we can also see that the very same verse says, he took our sins also, and he took our sicknesses. So I love that. If he has taken our sin away, it means we're forgiven, and we are not paying in our body for those mistakes we made. Because he said he took all of our diseases, and he took all of our sins, and when we repented, and he carried it away. So if it's been carried away, don't let it return. The effects of it. The payment is already done. Amen to that? Because 1 Peter 2 verse 24 says, He personally carried our sins in the New Living Translation. So who carried it? He carried it in his body. So it's already had a vehicle to move in on the cross so that we can be dead to sin, no longer desire to compromise, no longer a desire to lose the best inheritance, so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. Just say, I choose to live for what is right. That's how I bowl the devil out of my way. When I choose to live for what is right, it means the devil has no place to stay. Amen to that? He says, by his wounds, you are healed. Did Jesus have wounds on the cross? Absolutely. So his wounds absorbed all of our mistakes. It took all of our diseases and he willingly paid for it in full. I love that. That means we don't have to pay for it. I didn't say we won't be tested by it, but we know where it needs to go. It's already settled. Amen? So our Heavenly Father has the very same attitude towards us, right? Because remember, if He personally carried our sins in His body on the cross, and He personally took our sin, and He did what was right, he truly wants us to live in what is right. And so we can see that our Heavenly Father has that attitude towards His children. The suffering as an earthly father has towards His children. You know, He took what would be harmful to us and He paid for it in full. 
He doesn't want us to live under the harm of that. Why? Because he has compassion. And his compassion compels him to heal those who are suffering. He doesn't want us to suffer. But he wants us to make right choices so that we don't have to suffer. And the right choices is to choose wisely on what land will you build. On what, what will you entertain? What will you participate in? And if we choose to be in gratitude and thanksgiving, it just brings the blessing on. It lays the blessing on us. But if we complain and we grumble, we become blind with what is really right. Because there's a lot of good around us, but we have to choose. And so we need to have faith in God's love. Because his love is towards us. And his love is consistently to build and realign our lives. And we can see in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 14, he says, when he went ashore, he saw a large crowd of people and he felt compassion for them and he healed their sick. Imagine he lands up at a place and all his eyes could see was the ones that were suffering. And immediately his compassion healed everyone that was sick. This morning, I believe God's compassion is here to heal and set free each and every one that belongs to him today. He took away their diseases and he healed them from all their infirmities. Isn't that beautiful? And it's still here for us today. It didn't stop working. It is still active and still working. And he felt compassion for them and he healed their sick. God's compassion is always there. He says his loving kindness will never cease to produce. And so if we know that we are loved by the Lord, he's not smacking you over the head. He's not coming to you with condemnation. He's coming to you today because this price, this bill was settled already more than 2,000 years ago. But some choose to stay in the valleys. Some choose to believe they're not worthy. And God is saying, you are valuable, you are loved, and my love takes care of you is what he really is saying to you today. Because in 1 John 3 verse 8, the B part, it says there, the Son of God appeared for this purpose, that he might destroy and the Greek word says to loosen those bound by. So we can see that disease and infirmities can bind us, keep us in a stronghold and in that grip. But we don't want to live in the grip. We don't want to live in that grip, that hold, that stronghold of infirmity. Because he says he loosened those bound by the works of the devil. So we can choose today. I choose this day to follow Jesus. I'm not going to follow the route where the devil's name is written all over. Because if we choose to walk with the devil, we'll come under the works of the devil. And what would that be? Destruction, disease, infirmity, famine, loneliness, abandonment, every lie that he wants to put on us. But he says, I have brought you by the land of great influence. Choose on what land will you build your life? Where will you settle? And you know what? That's exactly what he wants for us. He says in Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17, and we're going to look at the New American Standard Bible version. It says, and when evening had come, they brought to him, who, and who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word. So can you see that the spirits were casted out? What spirits were they? Of deception, infirmity, disease. So those spirits, hopelessness, um, 
distraction, whatever distraction it had on it, he cast out each of them. And he says, many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were ill. Can you imagine what Jesus stands in front of you? He's not going to give you a long prayer to convince your mind. He's going to say, be healed, be set free, be delivered. And immediately, because he has authority and the power, it will leave. Because it cannot stay in a blessed, sanctified body. Be blessed. And there goes all the infirmities. There goes all the destruction. So I believe many times we don't speak the words that he speaks, a direct word. And a direct word is really, be healed today. So look at your neighbor, be set free. Be delivered. Be blessed. Sorrow go. Death leave. Life come. In Jesus' name. A direct word changes the atmosphere. Do you remember he said, be silent. And zoops, the zip just went on. There was no more nonsense talking. And then he had that demon's attention. And then he says, out in Jesus' name, obviously. Go. And they were gone. And do you remember he said to the woman that was accused of adultery, do you remember he said, anyone that has never sinned before, pick up the first stone and stone her. And they all dropped the rocks and they disappeared. And I love the fact that he said to her, woman, where are your accusers? And she looked up and they were gone. And he says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Because you know what it was like to be in bondage. You know what it was like to feel limited. Go and sin no more. And she was set free in one second. Because his love touched her life. And when the Lord's love touches your life, you don't want to go back to your old ways again. You don't want to practice the old anymore. Because the freedom and the peace you experience being free is worth so much more. And so they were delivered. And we see that in 1 Peter 2 verse 24, it says, And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. So where is our sin? In the body of Jesus that paid for it. If we have asked him to forgive us, it is a done deal. It's finished. That we might die to sin and live to righteousness. So how will we live? In the righteousness of God. And when we live in his right standing, we don't live under condemnation. So the minute condemnation knocks on your door of your heart, so I'm already forgiven, I'm already blessed by the Lord. I am not the downtrodden. I am not the rejected. I am not abandoned. I live in the freedom where I choose where his invite is. So when the Lord invites you into his righteousness, he has delivered you out of abandonment. He's delivered you out of rejection. And he says, you are mine. You belong to the most our God. So we live in in his righteousness, and he says, for by his wounds, you were healed. And you know, his wounds took our sorrow. It took our distraction. It took our hopelessness, and it made a way for us. That is why he says he's a way-making God. And I love the fact he didn't say he's a limited God. He said he's a way-making God where there seems to be no way. So whatever way we don't find ourselves in, just step back into his righteousness and say, Lord, I choose to stay in you. And through you, I know I can do all things. But if I'm independent, I'm limited. But if I stay with him, 
I'm not limited. Amen to that? So we need to have faith in His love, right? The book of Matthew 14, verse 14 says, And when He came out, He saw a great multitude and felt that compassion for them, and He healed their sick. That was the reminder. It was His compassion that healed the sick. So God's always got compassion available to set us free. But we mustn't live under the condemnation. Because if we feel we don't qualify, we actually reject His compassion. And His compassion is there, ever ready to bind us up, to lift us up, and to bring us to the place of victory. So the minute you call upon the name of Jesus, you are saved out of. Yield out of. Free from whatever disease the devil try to put on you. He might try to slow you down, the devil, by putting that symptom on you. And the appearance, you can see it with your eye, but you have to make a choice. Where are you going to take this to? Are you going to land up in the hospital with us? Or are you going to take what Jesus paid for? I think it's cheaper and better to take what Jesus paid for. And it comes without trouble, isn't it? Because if we take what he paid for, we already stand victorious. We already have the victory in it. Amen to that. So when people say, I see you getting stronger every day, say, yes, I'm working out my salvation. The salvation of God is adding no sorrow in my life. Yes, we're getting stronger by the day. How are you feeling today? Getting stronger. All is well. That means I'm not worried about this. All is well. God's got this. I've already prayed. I've given it to Him. That means I'm working this through. Hallelujah. So He gave us the same power for healing today. And it never stopped ever to produce. It is still working for us today. Right? And remember, most important, we have the authority to use this power of God to do the work of Christ whenever we need to. So it is available. You just have to access it. You have to take and lay hold of it. And it will come to pass in Jesus' name, right? So what do we hear? We're hearing today that God never changes. He never changes his mind. His plan will stay yay and amen from beginning to end until we graduate one day. That means this in between, we're working our faith until we meet Jesus one day in the clouds and we're ready to graduate. But you know, some of us, we take a bit long to graduate, don't we? And your family is quite happy that it takes a bit longer for you to graduate. Is that not true? But at least when we graduate, we're graduating with all of these beautiful miracles that we have tasted the goodness of God. And that is the best part. So remember, he says, what he did for mankind on the earth more than 2,000 years ago He's still doing today by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. And that is so beautiful. We still have the same Holy Spirit that is working in and through us. But if we reject the Holy Spirit, we won't have what He can do through us and in us. And that is why it's important to hold on to your faith. And don't reject the Holy Spirit. Because when we reject the Holy Spirit, we reject every benefit He has for us. And we're not giving up on the benefits. The book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says that, Behold, I have given you authority. And I believe when people are going through tough times, remind them of what does this word say. You've been given the authority. He says to tread upon serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Is some power or a little power or a lot of power? All power. 
He says, because when you take that all power, you've been given. And he says, and nothing shall injure you. Nothing. Not even if it looks like that. Nothing will injure you. So that means no fear, yeah. No fear. Because faith lives here. Holy Spirit is in me. I can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. But we've got to open our mouths and say, what does Jesus say about this? He says, you are complete, lacking nothing. You have been given all power to trample on snakes, on scorpions, and all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall injure you. The only time things will injure us is when we go back to the flesh, to the limited way of thinking, to the leaving God out of the picture. But if you put God back in the picture, you can do all things. You live your miracles. You live in the fullness of God's plan. Hebrews 13 verse 8 gives us another example. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. So you're not going to run out of the goodness of God. The goodness of God has been with you yesterday. It's with you today. And the goodness of God is on your path in the front. We heard at the beginning of our teaching that he goes before us preparing the journey. So we already have God that has opened up the way for us to walk in. But it's got to be the blessing way. Can't be the limited way of thinking. Can't be go back to the stronghold. Got to stay in the freedom. Because if we choose freedom, he backs you all the way. But if you choose limitation, the devil starts raising the levels of attack because now he's got you in a grip. And all he wants to do is get you to curse God and die and say, where's God in all of this? There's no God. God's not hearing my prayers. Now that means the devil got it right to lie to you. And you're starting to believe that his plans are not for you. Amen? So we need to repent. And then last, to really bring us back to the full impression of what does God say? He gave us the same power. So where is this power? It's the same power. In Luke 10 verse 19, Behold, I have given you authority. So who's got authority? We do. He says to tread upon the serpents. That means all those demonic forces that wants to undo your faith. All those curses that wants to move back in. And he says, and scorpions. And that means the poison that the devil wants to try and put in our minds. So if we will not take the poison that the devil wants to put in our minds and to become curses as well, he says, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, he didn't say some, he says, nothing shall injure you. Well, is God take, talking the truth here? Nothing shall injure you. But you can't stay in two camps. You've got to decide, is God speaking the truth to you? Then you have to apply what is true. And if we don't apply, we can't have the benefits. That is how benefits work. You have to hear, you have to speak it, and choose to do it. Then we get the benefit. But passive Joe is not going to get it. And passive Sally is not going to get it. We have to work our faith. So look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm working my faith. I'm believing the word. I'm speaking the word. And I'm responding with the word. And God will do the rest. That means I have victory. Already. In Jesus' name. So victory is with the believers. They taste the goodness of God. They live with the benefits of the Lord. They have the strength to push past the obstacles. So look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, move that muscle of yours. 
Come on, girls, where's your muscles? I mean, my little grandkids, when they were young, they said, I'm strong, Nana. And then they had these tiny, thin little arms. Nana, just look at my muscles. And I said, yo, they're so big and strong today. And then they say, feel it, Nana. It feels like rocks. And then I'll feel that little delicate little skin. I said, it's stone hard. <laughs> but that's how you win. You see, you have to believe first, and then you'll see it. But if you think I'm weak and I'm a jellyfish and I can't do anything, you're not going to have much success. Because it says, as a man thinketh, so are they. Because what you think, you say. And so where do we get our victory? Believing. Taking the word of truth, ownership. And that ownership has to be spoken. Because without speaking it, you cannot see the evidence. So it is fourfold. It's hear, it's believe, it is speak, and then you see. Because you start walking according to what you believe. Amen to that. But if you leave this place and think, I'm abandoned, I'm rejected, no one cares about me, where am I going to find food? How am I going to live? It tells me you are questioning that you have no love and the Lord has no love for you. How could we ever question that he loves us? Because he's watched over us. We heard this day today that God works and he goes before us and he prepares the way for us. We've got to just choose to walk with him. And then we will have what we say. Amen to that. So let us just pray. Who believes that the word was for you today? Amen. Then this morning, wherever you have a need, put your hand on that spot. If it's your wallet, put your hand there. If it's your heart that needs repair, put your hand on your heart. If it is your leg, put your hand on your leg. If it's your foot, I don't mind. You can put your hand on your foot. No one's going to worry about that. If it's your ears that need healing, then put your hands on your ears. Whatever it is, but whatever you don't apply to, you can't have because it requires faith. And so this morning, if it's wisdom, put both your hands on your head. Because let me tell you, we need wisdom. We need wisdom to have great success in this world. If you don't work at the truth, you won't see. So we've got ourselves to blame for not applying and not working our faith. Because our faith, when it is active, it's always rewarded. God is never empty-handed. He wants to heal us. He wants to save us out of that destruction. He wants to strengthen us and take weariness and tiredness and everything that's not working off of us so that we can have success. And this morning, we're getting ready for a successful week because there's no limitations on our pathway. When we take God with us and we walk with God, we shall eat from the good of the land. Is that not what he says? He's not going to trip us up. We'll eat from the good of the land. Because God says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if we see God, he will put our footsteps in that next job. He'll put us in that next place of victory. But our focus has got to be God, not man. So this morning we focus our whole mind on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who paid for me on the cross, the one who forgave me for all of my sin, all of my weaknesses. But if you're going to hold on and feed your weakness, it's going to destroy you. The weaknesses of our flesh needs to be pinned on that cross. And if you do that today, I heard a beautiful testimony of someone that wanted to give up sugar. And she says it was quite hectic, her craving for sugar. She'd make a big tray of, of um, um, fudge. And 
in one short little moment, she'll eat the half of the tray in one short moment. And she'll get into bed and she'll take the other half. And she's a skinny lady. It was almost impossible to believe she was thriving of so much sugar. And, but she was having pain in her ankles and pain in her legs because of the sugar that was causing inflammation. And she just one morning, she got off the bed and she says, God, I cannot do this anymore with the sugar. Now, whatever it is, if you say, Lord, I cannot live this life anymore. She says, in that day, she got totally set free. And she never craved sugar after that day. But she meant what she said. I cannot live like this anymore. I cannot do this anymore. And God heard her. And right up to today, she has completely shedded sugar. Any form of sugar. She doesn't even crave for any sugary thing anymore. Any of us need to put that on the altar? Whatever craving you have that does not feed your faith or your future well, see yourself, take it today and put it on the cross and say, Lord, I cannot do this anymore because we could live a yo-yo life up, down, up, down, up, down. And every time we come down, it's like our joy just goes with it as well. And so today, let's pin it on the cross and say to the Lord, no more. I cannot do this anymore. I choose to live in your promise and God will do the rest for you. So let us pray. Whatever it is that you are giving up, whatever it is you want to be whole, whatever you want to be complete in today, Ask the Lord to set you free. And he's going to do that right now. And the blood works, God's working with that. Hormone levels working with that today. In Jesus' name. I just see depression going today. Despondency is leaving today. I see that that high inflammation levels causing pain in your body is leaving today. No more. We won't have that anymore. Won't have to lug that with us anymore. And from this day, we're going to be healed. From that sorrow, you're going to be healed. You see, we can't walk faith for someone else. They've got to choose to walk there. It, life comes with a choice. We can try and convince people to choose Jesus. But they will only choose him when they see the value how it will benefit them. But today we ask that the Lord would visit them. We call forth visitations, where God will visit those people to choose life, to choose to be healed, and not stay where they are. Because life is a choice. Broken hearts today, disappointment, God is healing you from that. But if he heals you and you give it to him, don't go back there. Remember that you've asked and that petition is granted the minute you ask in Jesus' name. Father, we today bring your people to you. Lord, that disappointment, we place it on the altar. Those addictions, we place that on the altar. That discomfort, we're placing it on the altar because we choose and we believe and we receive this day to be healed, to be whole, to be complete and have no curse living in our lives. We're not going to feed any curses. We're not going to feed infirmity. We're not going to feed the yokes. We today thank you, Lord, that your word is sufficient and that your word changes and redirects 
our footsteps back into the blessing that adds no sorrow. So we bind you, Satan. We bind and we break the grip of any infirmity, any disease, any yoke, every yoke of bondage off of the people in Jesus' name. Be healed, says the Lord to you today. Be set free from that brokenness, disappointment, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If you believe God is touching you, just raise your hands and just start thanking Him. Thanking Him for confusion that is gone. For the accuser's grip is broken off of you today. That He's restoring your family. He's restoring your loved ones. You can stand in the gap. But as long as you choose not to wear any of the effects in your body, because otherwise it will escalate in you. It will steal your joy. So this morning we bring it to you, Father. We bring our loved ones to you today. And we thank you that you're breaking the yokes off of them. You're breaking the strongholds and that grip of self-centeredness off of them. In Jesus' name. Oh, we receive our healing, Lord. We receive our breakthroughs. We receive the completeness and not the lack anymore. Oh, we thank you for wisdom. Thank you that we receive the wisdom of God in our lives. And we thank you, Lord, that you are restoring the authority on our lives. That we have the power. We have the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and nothing will harm or hurt us or put claims on our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, today that you restore the body of Christ, that no longer are we under the yokes and strongholds, the grip of bondage at all because we choose not to practice it. We choose to be whole and complete, lacking nothing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. Just thank the Lord right now. Thank him that he has definitely broken the yokes. Famine, not enough, broken off of us. We open our hearts to receive the abundance God has got for us, to live in the goodness of God for the rest of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you're restoring and making us whole, complete, lacking nothing. Our offspring, our families, everyone that is connected to our lives, that we live in the freedom of what your word says. In Jesus' name, that by the stripes of Jesus, we are the healed. In Jesus' name, we have been made whole. In Jesus' name right now, we believe it, we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.